Hey everyone, Kevin Ross here, and welcome to another episode of A Shot of Technology. Now today I wanted to share with the community my podcasting setup for a pretty intricate uh, requirement that I have. Now, as you may or may not know, I have been podcasting. I've actually, we're in our third year of our show, and I'm actually starting a brand new podcast that goes along with the video component of A Shot of Technology. So I want to do an audio-only component here um, with a shot of technology and so that's still in its infancy but just stay tuned for that because that'll be happening pretty soon now not only do I want to share with the community my setup and hopefully this will help you if you're interested in something like this I also wanted to thank Ray Ortega of the podcaster studio and podcasters roundtable Ray I actually reached out to you on your site and thank you so much for getting back to me because I have a pretty crazy setup here that I'm going to share with the community and it wasn't it wasn't just your responses that helped it was actually a video now I've watched several of your videos and you do great work and certainly appreciate you ha um, having you in the community because it's great to come to YouTube and find answers to the many questions that we all have but Ray I was actually it was late one night and I was going through your videos and I saw your video about an audio test with a microphone that you'd happen to be using and Google Hangouts on air. So for the community out there, I wanted to say, if you're looking to start podcasting, uh, certainly find an expert out there, a guru. Um, there are many resources out there. And of course, Ray is one of them. And all the guys in the podcasters roundtable certainly are, are fantastic resources. But one piece of advice that I do, or at least another piece of advice that I want to give uh, to the community out there, three years ago when we started our show, we went with Blog Talk Radio. Well, just all I can say is I'm not going to go into all of the details, but just try to avoid Blog Talk Radio at all costs. It does seem like a, an all-in-one, set-it-and-forget-it uh, situation, but quite frankly, in the long run, when it comes to quality and control over your podcast it really isn't the best option. So that being said, we had extricated ourselves from BTR and we wanted to keep the live component going. So we wanted to use Google Hangouts on air as the live component. But many of our guests out there didn't have access to a Google or they didn't have a Google account, didn't really ha understand Hangouts on air. So then we figured, well, most people have a Skype account and they understand how to use that. And they also have a phone because we have a phone in number through the Skype uh, setup. And so either way, they could get in touch with us. And so my co-host and I could hang out on, the, on air on the Google Hangout. And then we could also bring the Skype caller into the Hangout that way. Now, the setup that I have does require a mixer and two computers. My issue was, though, is that I couldn't get the signal split or figured out in a way that my co-host could hear the Skype caller and the Skype caller couldn't hear my co-host on the Hangout. And I did all this research about a mix minus and these cords and these mixers and having the two computers and I figured, you know, I, what, how, can, how is this even possible? As, as our podcast has evolved, I started with the Blue Yeti, which is a great budget, um, you know, microphone and it's actually a great quality. But the problem was is that as our show got more popular and we were live during um, the, the evening hours and I have three kids, I couldn't necessarily um, deal with that because I put foam everywhere, I put a shield around the microphone, and it still picked up their sort of chatter in the background. And so obviously that's just one of the downfalls of having a live show in the evening when your family's home. So what I ended up doing was getting a mixer and then investing in this headset, Audio-Technica Audio headset that's really like a sportscaster headset. So basically, um, you, you talk in the mic here and most of the ambient noise is actually filtered out. It doesn't really pick up a lot. It's, it was great because I actually took it to a, um, a conference and when I was at the conference, you could hear me, but you really couldn't hear anything else in the background and anything that really came through every now and again could have been handled in post-production. So this was a great little setup for the last year. So I had been using this and another Mackie mixer that I had that was a, a smaller portable four-channel mixer, which again was a great setup. 
And this is actually what I've been using up until a couple of weeks ago. Now, the problem, again, was that how do I get all of these signals so that everybody can hear each other, nobody hears anybody back in their, you know, their headphones or on the phone or anything like that? Now, Ray, again, you, answered the, you tried to answer the question and help me out online, but again, it wasn't until that video that I saw. I'll put the link below uh, until the lights went, went on. So Ray was actually talking about this microphone that has a dual output. And as he's going along, he's talking about how it's plugged in USB from the mic into this computer, and then the XLR cable goes into his mixer. And I look at his mic, and, and I couldn't believe that the light didn't go off sooner because I've actually seen him use this mic quite a bit. I actually had that mic. I bought it in September. It's like almost February now. It was just still in the box. I bought it to, to interview people while we were at the conference. So the mic that I'm actually talking about is the Audio Technica, it's the ATR2100. This is a dual output, so it's a multiple output microphone, USB and XLR. So I, after watching your video, Ray, I put it to test, I hooked everything up and it actually worked. So let me tell the community what I'm talking about and let me explain that again, especially if you're wanting to podcast the way that we are. So. <laughs> And again, I just couldn't believe I had this mic. Seriously, I had this mic sitting in the box for months and I just never got it out. I'd only used it that one time at the conference. So the Mackie Pro FX, which is the mixer I have, and I'm going to show you all of that. I'm actually recording on my portable vlogging camera so I can take you over here to the mixer. It's just underneath the desk. But the way that it works is I have a MacBook Pro over here on the left. I've got an iMac over here. So what I do, oh, and let me um, preface this. The Mackie Pro FX is a USB mixing board, and it plugs right into your computer. But with this setup, I don't do that, and, and I'll show you why, and I'll explain that. So on this ATR2100, it's got a USB out here, and what this does is this goes in to the MacBook Pro that is hosting the Hangouts on Air with my co-host. So that plugs into the USB port in this MacBook Pro. Then what I actually do is take the XLR jack, this input or output, and put it into channel one of the mixer. I then take from the headphone jack, and again, I'll show you, the headphone jack, or the port rather, the headphone port from the MacBook Pro, I take that out and put it into channel two of the mixer. So channel one and channel two are coming from this, this microphone, channel one, channel two on the MacBook Pro. Now, to bring in the Skype caller on the iMac, the headphone out jack actually comes in to channel, I think I just have it set up on channel 910 or channel nine. But anyway, I have it coming into that channel. And then what I actually have to have to do so that I can run a mix minus, so that they can hear us, but they don't hear themselves when they're talking, is I have to do an FX send or aux out back into the iMac through the, through the microphone jack. So rather than me or you trying to figure this out, let me show you what I'm talking about. So why don't we take a look? All right, so I apologize for the lighting, but I think you'll hopefully get the gist here. Now again, here's the XLR in, from that ATR2100, right here. This is the headphone out on the MacBook Pro that is then going into channel two that I can control here. So one and two, MacBook Pro. What I then have to do in channel nine and 10, right here, this is, and of course I unplugged it so I could show you. This is actually headphone out in the iMac going into channel 9 and 10. And of course I can control that. And of course then there's an FX send right here, FX send, and then the mono send. This actually goes back into the mic port.
mic port right into the iMac. Now, of course, what you have to do when you're talking about a mix minus, you've probably seen this before, you turn up your aux here on these channels, but then what you have to make sure of is that these aux and FX buttons are down so that the caller doesn't hear themselves because that would just be really annoying. But we can hear them, they can hear us, so then that's just part of the mix minus. And I don't want to get into too much detail about that. But I am enjoying the Pro FX12, especially now that I've figured everything out. I also have another channel, 7 and 8, where I use a program, uh, an app called Boss Chalk Studio, where you can podcast just straight from an iPod or an iPad or an iPhone. And what I do is I actually run music in there. So I can actually control the music in here and then work with this fader up and down. Okay. So hopefully I've explained that at least as best as I could. Again, it's a very intricate setup, having a Hangouts on Air on one computer and the Skype computer having to host the call-in number or you know the Skype user. Because you know, would it be easier to have everybody on a Hangout on Air? Yes, of course it would. But again, we're just trying to be as accommodating as we can for those that aren't as tech savvy. And really, Skype has been wonderful to at least be able to offer the least tech savvy person because quite frankly everybody's got a cell phone or at least access to a landline or some form of uh, a tin can and a string or whatever that they can dial out onto Skype so that we can bring them in on the show. So Ray, thank you so much. I'm going to continue to support your community over there and certainly blast it out uh, here in my community to head over to you and uh, get more information about podcasting and the right setups and what to do to promote, how to promote. And um, I just wanted to thank you so much uh, for what you've, what you've done and you didn't even know that you did it. So I just figured that uh, a great form of flattery was to give you this video response. I love when people give me video responses, so I figured I would just pay that forward. So anyway, if you're interested in a, in a similar setup like I've got, doing very similar things as far as a show's concerned, this is actually what I'm doing, and so far it's working. So anyway, thanks again for watching this episode of A Shot of Technology. Good luck with any podcasts uh, that you've got coming up or that you already have. And let me know in the, in the feedback and comments section below. What are you using? Are you new to podcasting? Are you savvy in podcasting? Is this a crazy setup? Because I think it is a crazy setup. It doesn't have to be this complex. But to keep a live component going, this is ultimately what we've had to do. So again, thanks so much. Feel free to like, share, and promote this video, and I'll catch you again next time on the next episode of A Shot of Technology.